Oh, uh, is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so, so MATLAB, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very vast used in uh, different uh, uh, institutions, including universities and the other industries as well. So I will start with giving a brief uh, introduction, what is MATLAB, and I'll discuss uh, what is uh, MAT, uh, the MATLAB portfolio, where it is being used, and what, what is the state of the art. The research, uh, the uh, uh, researchers who have been used uh, very well. And uh, at the same time, so I will give you a couple of examples for motivations that I have been affected. And, uh, and uh, uh, so with that, and also I will give some uh, references and uh, links and, and a couple, uh, couple of uh, textbook uh, books so that you can follow for the. Uh, uh, studies and self studies and then I will start the tutorial. So what is MATLAB? The MATLAB is a programming environment or the computing environments that you can use for analyzing data or you can use for develop algorithms, develop models. And this is being used millions of special engineers and scientists. And of course, even though it, it, it's meant for computation, we compute uh, computing and analysis. So therefore, this has been uh, widely used in other disciplines as well. So I will talk about what other disciplines and the application that have been used, and that have been used. So, so this is very, very uh, of the one, one bad thing, or not the bad thing, but the one thing is that this is commercial, so you have to pay and it costs very much. So if you, if you can buy for a, for a license for the institution, that would be better. And other than that, so of course you can try with the, the, with the um, uh, trial license for 30 days, but uh, uh, it's better if you can, uh, if you have a, a copy, but at the same time, I can, I can encourage you to, if a basic program can be run in open source Octave as well. So you, that's, a, that's what, why I mentioned that in the, in the previous slide of Octave. So the acronym for matrix laboratories, that's why it, it was initially developed for linear algebra calculation, computation of linear algebra, especially the matrix computation. So that's MATLAB, is the matrix laboratory. It was started as uh, by Chancellor mentioned, it was at the EPPC in 1960s and 70s, but then first commercial release was in 1984. And uh, the, the desktop version came in 2000, and then the GPU support, especially for parallel computing using CUDA, etc. So it came in 2010, and then the live scripts, that's uh, being introduced in 2016. So this is very important. If you want to share your uh, uh, scripts, and if you want to include figures, text, so this is very good. Actually, I created a couple of uh, live scripts, maybe I can share with you later. So th then you can, while running, you can have uh, the output. But of course, it makes slow, but at the same time, but that will be you know, interactive. Uh, you can create interactive sessions. And what lab, ma ma MATLAB is not coming just as programming, but it comes with the graphical user interface, but as, as, as a model based design. Then simulink, so it's always come with uh, together. The map chat comes yeah. simulink. So the simulink is uh, uh, you have blocks, and you can connect these blocks to create the program, uh, not like uh, text. Mm -hmm. But of course, today I will not talk about simulink, yeah, but only uh, that. And it includes professionally developed 60 plus toolboxes. So these toolboxes are specialized functions that is developed for different applications. So you have control system toolbox, neural network toolbox, biology, biology system biology toolbox, like right? There are toolboxes, but of course I will not talk about these toolboxes today. If you know the basics or fundamentals, it's on, it's, those are kind of specialized functions. So if you know the basics, you can uh, very easily tackle this. Uh, therefore I will talk about only the fundamentals because you know, there are people from now this with the experts in this uh, audience, so I will start, uh, I will give you a very a fundamental approach. 
So of course, if you know the fundamentals, you can do anything uh, uh, complex. So it combines uh, the desktop environment and it is uh, used, you can use different, the, uh, the, in the desktop, you can use the environment, you can use, uh, you can use a high level programming language as a hybrid program language or as a data anal analyzer or else creating a, a graphical user interface for, for presenting and also create a very uh, publication quality uh, in gra graphs and plots. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, the live editor, it's, uh, you can create scripts combining the code and the output and the format text. And, and it's, uh, it's a kind of executable, executable notebook that Come, come, you can share with the others so they can run it and then they, see, they can see the, the outputs very nicely and we can include the, the, the text that describes the uh, functions, etc. And not only that, so the MATLAB has a community, therefore, this can extend thousands of packages from other, uh, other sources. So, for example, you can get uh, freely available GitHub from the GitHub and also the MATLAB file exchange. So if you create a network account, and then there are people who develop a specific tasks, specific functions, or set of functions, then you can upload it, and then everybody can uh, download it. So that the sharing facility is there. So if you Google, so you can definitely can find a, a function or a set of two tools uh, that can be used for your problem. And not only that, the MATLAB can be uh, the code developed can be run, uh, put into an embedded hardware so that you can run this in uh, embedded hardware and then you can use that in a different system. So this is, this is very good if you, uh, if, you are, uh, if you are not familiar with CC++ or any other HDL or CUDA code, but you can simply code this in MATLAB and uh, there are the add-ons so that you can convert, uh, the code can be converted into the hardware, and then you can put that in, and then you can test uh, runs. This is being used uh, widely for engineering applications. So let's talk about what type of disciplines this has been used. So basically this has been used in physics. So the physics includes from engineering to science and all these uh, top uh, researchers and the, in the world. So these have been used, for example, to, for, to develop control experiments and or acquire analyze data and compare with simulations for instrumentation and on wireless communications, all this is being used in, uh, in this discipline, the MATLAB. If you go into MATLAB work, uh, MATLAB's website, you can access with examples. So these are actually all these were taken from their website. So they, they keep their portfolio. So please go and have a look. So these, all these are coming with examples. And the biological science, sciences, that's another discipline that they, are, they provide the, for analysis data or model, for, to, uh, more, 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 uh, to create models and simulate and also analyze, and especially for the image processing, so the analysis of images. So, and also the, there are toolboxes that they are developed for, for analysis of gene expressions and, and also for the most, a lot of biological scientists applications are there. And the other discipline, neuroscience, especially for generation of spike patterns and then the, the analysis of images and development of spiking and non-spiking neurons and creating models and uh, how these are interacted with different circuits. So that can be used in the neuroscience applications. So I have I have been quite working with this, uh, in this area. And then uh, Earth and Ocean and atmospheric so social sciences. So this there are in this discipline also the method has been used very widely, especially with the thermodynamics, fluid dynamics, and the earth uh, the, 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 the different uh, the climate data. So all these can be can has been used in these disciplines. The method as a toolbox and as a as a tool, research tool. So the sum of the applications, so I'm not going to explain everything. So these are a couple of applications, especially I have, I have highlighted that is related to biology. So these applications are going for computational biology. So you will analyze and you create models and then you do 
uh, analysis and also you do creating module and predictions and this can be used in vice versa. After prediction, you can go to the experiment and do the research and then come back and then put, uh, you can treat, uh, twist your model and then uh, vice versa, you can get uh, fine tuned your, your model. And other the data sciences, learning, image processing, computer vision, and all these applications has been used in different industries. Those industries can be from aerospace to biotechnical, pharmaceuticals, and for medical devices, especially if you want to provide a control system for a medical device. So there are toolboxes available. At the same time, there are physical, the models available for simulation of patients with different conditions. So this piece can, can be used for has been used in industries very uh, thoroughly for the development of medical devices. And some of the capabilities, if I want to uh, mention, so it has cloud computing. You can do, you can share your work with the others and can combine and store very large number of data in different places and that facilities is there. there. And uh, discrete event simulations, as I mentioned, em embedded code generation so that you can put this into hardware and, and you can create a loop, hardware and software, you can incorporate in the loop meta based simulations, and then you can fine tune your controller. And the model based designs, similarly, and the model development, physical modeling, especially, there are toolboxes available for people of uh, uh, physical models. And the real time simulation, report generation, that's also important because the publication quality. Uh, plots and the graphs are needed and then uh, this is this has been quite uh, very uh, be, uh, used by the researchers for that purpose in different disciplines and uh, some of the toolbox examples are this uh, the bioinformatics so that i mentioned so this is related to the uh, uh, biology and then computer vision the data acquisition image processing curve fitting deep learning vsv so there are 60 more plus toolboxes these are special kind of the specialized functions that uh, that can use uh, the algorithms and, uh, and and also the models are developed to use for the specific area. So, but of course, if you know the fundamentals, you can understand very easily and you can use this for your uh, uh, research work. So, uh, so what? Let's talk about uh, what, what type of data we have as biological, the biological data. Mostly the, the biological research is focusing on functioning of living cells. And then the, what, what, the, what are the circumstances that can disrupt its function and what are the solutions? So the, and this can be coming from experimental data. So there are a lot of data available. So these data can be of different types. So it can be a DNA or RNA sequences or the graphs representing protein protein interactions or a geometric information about the acids and then the patterns and, and also the and also you, you will need a model to analyze because most of the time the biological data comes with as a, as a gray box so you don't know you cannot explain some part but you know part of it so then you can model it but the, the model depending on your level of understanding your level of complexity the uh, needed uh, the, for the solution, so you can have from simple to complex models. And most of the cases, these data will be high dimensional, but low sample. So you will have less number of data, but uh, you will have the, the, there, are, there will be the parameter space is very large. So you will have five dimensional low sample data. So you can analyze this data very uh, accurately, very, uh, very efficiently using MATLAB. So there are toolboxes available. So some of the applications in that lab is especially for bioinformatics area, the so gene expression and data analysis and the sequence analysis and the proteomic system biology, the modeling and uh, the pathway identification, the pathway uh, the signal flow identifications and the model-based designs. And not only this, but there are a lot of toolboxes of the third-party toolboxes developed to uh, each of these uh, uh, sub areas of uh, biology. So some of the toolboxes are here. But we, I'm not going to explain it to you. Google. You can find this, but of course I will give you some of the links uh, for the, uh, the reference. Okay, that's all for the simple and uh, very quick introduction to uh, uh, 
uh, introduction to MATLAB. So let's uh, talk about a couple of examples for more division. So this, uh, the, this work uh, I did together with uh, my colleagues. Uh, this is a simple example of creating a hopper oscillator network. The hopper oscillator network is basically you can create, uh, you can, uh, it's, it's a, a mathematical analogy oscillator. So this oscillator, you can combine these oscillators with different phase uh, uh, connections. So by having this, you can vary. So this is a developed, uh, developed by me for a, for a uh, practical class. But this, uh, if you study, this can be think of as a population of neurons firing with each other. And then you can, uh, the, the, depending on the connectivity, you can have reciprocal activity. So this can be used to analyze for further, if you have some biological data, repress it, you can, you can repress it. But if you have biological data that is a kind of representing oscillatory acti activity, so you can use this as the basic for that model. So this was used for to, uh, to analyze the, the antenna movement pattern of the stick insect. So this is the stick insect and the stick insect has this uh, antenna in, in, uh, uh, on, on its head and the antenna has two, uh, two uh, segments and these segments oscillate. So these oscillators, this movement are oscillatory. So there is, this can be coupled, something like these two oscillators can be coupled in different ways to obtain this uh, uh, movement. Even though this is sin sinusoidal variations comes in the basic pattern, but you can, if you have the data, you can then convert that into using frequency FFTs, you can convert that into the spectrum, and then you can use that spectrum to pattern this network. So if you, if you do that, so, for example, in this case, so these are the experiments of real animal data, the movement of the, the two, two joints, joint angles, and the movement of the tip of the antenna is something like this. And if you do this with, the, with our module, so it will almost, most of uh, it has been created in the experiment. Of course, the, this animal is moving with its head moving as well, so to incorporate that information. So this is the real animal moving its head, and this is the MATLAB, uh, the BST. Module simulation model developed for the, uh, the results the change of its head movement together with. And, and another example is the analysis of the, uh, the uh, insect muscle activation time. So this was developed by me, and this has been now uh, you can download it and, uh, and also you can uh, install as a toolbox or app in the in your MATLAB environment. So this has been now uploaded into the file exchange, so you can very easily download. So this is known as IMDC, version 1.0.4. So this is the GUI. So here we try to compare the five sets of uh, muscle activation dynamics models for insects, because it is important for insect. One spike is important. The activation of one spike is important, not like mammalians and other vertebrates. So, it's, uh, it's, uh, so in that case, you can uh, take that as a simple low pass filter, but for this, you cannot. So there are different models. So this, by, with this tool, we can generate and can compare these uh, uh, muscles. So this, uh, sorry, uh, muscle activation and function. And this was developed for the, 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 you know, the cricket muscles for the SEDI and FEDI. So these are the block experiments. And also, not only that, this toolbox provides how, if you have data, how to. Uh, uh, optimize these data to to match uh, your experimental data. Then you can create parameters and you can use, use your own parameters model for your animal data. So this is uh, so this is this this everything is was done in, uh, in the MATLAB. That's why we create a toolbox so that uh, so that everybody can use it. It's pretty available. And recently we had uh, from the collaboration with the news. The Faculty of Engineering and the Faculty of Medicine. So we started to think of, uh, due to this COVID pandemic situation, to create a ventilator. So the ventilator, the, so, so first we, to create the ventilator, we need to have a kind of a very complex model. So we have used CVLink and Simscape MATLAB for this purpose. And so this looks like the Simscape or the CVLink model. It's also the MATLAB, but the graphical interface. So the good thing is that you can create your patient, uh, the lung model as well. So then you can simulate the, the different conditions of lung, different COVID-19 uh, 
applications will have different resistance, different pressure components, and the, the, the rhythms will be vary. So you can simulate that activity at the same time and simulate the thermodynamics effect of the, the tubes connecting your the mask and the, the ventilator. And this is the control. So the control development of control is the important. So in this uh, from our group, so we have developed the very uh, um, uh, in the simulation model. As of now, it is in the simulation. So the, uh, the, the basic mods, the volume can, with with all basic mods, and this can be analyzed with the dashboard. So this this is a this is the the output uh, of the, the that can be used. Uh, that can be incorporated into hardware so that the, the ventilator output will be looked at this. All the controls can be input. Uh, all the input, input parameters can be given. Accordingly, you can select different ventilation modes and uh, they can be assistive or the passive uh, control that can be done. And at the same time, by having this, so you can simulate the different conditions, different scenarios of the patient as well. So you, uh, you can select the the breathing pattern, the, what's the, the, the breathing rate, and then can increase and decrease the resistivity depending on the condition. And then accordingly, we can test with uh, what type of inputs, how we can uh, change the, the input variables, for example, the, the volume, what is the tidal volume, and how what is the, the peak, uh, the value. So we can change to some, somehow uh, um, create some com comfort in the patient. So, so these are kind of examples that we did uh, using uh, MATLAB. So I'm not going to take too much time. So these are the references that uh, uh, that you can, uh, most of the re references are from MATLAB's account. And then I have came across these uh, nice uh, textbooks. Actually, today's uh, webinar will be based on this introduction to MATLAB for biologists. This is very interesting, and these authors have clearly, nicely developed uh, the flow of uh, uh, the sequence of uh, chapters. So I, I simply follow these chapters, and then I have most of the, the, the things I have taken for, for this webinar, I have taken from this text. So I should thank them. So, and also it is in the as a, as a textbook suggestion in uh, in the MATLAB uh, Netflix website. So these are a couple of other examples for different uh, MATLAB for different uh, disciplines. So this is very good if you have it. Uh, it's available in Amazon. Please buy it. So it's, it's good. And some other web links. So these are the couple of web links that I have mentioned uh, in, in the previous one of the previous slides. So different uh, third party toolboxes that can be used for analysis. So these are some of the, the web links so that you can get uh, to an uh, further look. So that's all for the basic introduction to the MATLAB. So let's start uh, with the tutorial. As of now, any, any question? So I hope you have now, uh, at least in background, we have you are running MATLAB, either MATLAB or TIP. So, assuming that, so let's, uh, if I give you a very brief introduction, what I will be covering, that of, of course will take. Uh, uh, depend on the time. So I will basically uh, start with the getting started, how we install and what are the very basic uh, uh, the structure in, in uh, structural environment of the MATLAB. And then I will go deep little by little. So starting with the command line, expert, uh, uh, using command line to do the commands. Uh, and then uh, the different uh, concepts, arrays and matrices, and then how you can write a script to automate and how do you access help and there are different building functions and how do you plot and how do you create functions and then how do you import and export data from import map data to MATLAB or export data from MATLAB and also MATLAB as a programming language. So basically how you can incorporate these conditional statements if else then 
and also the while loops, conditional loops, for loops, etc. So this will be the, 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 the content that I'm going to cover, but of course uh, that depends on the time. But anyway, hopefully the, uh, I hope we can do this uh, the day. If not, maybe we will we, we may schedule another session later. But anyway, so as the getting start, uh, getting started, I hope now we have maybe you all may have installed. So the installation come, uh, files come from the Windows and Linux and Mac. So you can um, Mac, Mac OS. So you can download it from this site. And there are standard licenses, of course. So for, for for this purpose, maybe you can use the trial version, uh, or else since we are not going to use any other. Uh, specialized toolboxes, all these scripts can be uh, readily run on uh, Octave. So that's the good thing. But of course, there are some limitations when you uh, Octave, even though it is freely available. But uh, try to find a copy of uh, by copy at this uh, So try to get some access to one of the uh, installations. And uh, of course, if you create a Mathworks account, so as I think we have sent you a link and also when you do the registration, after registration, so it's better to create a Mathworks account, then you can, uh, at least you can run these basic commands in, even, even in your mobile phone. So that's available for mobile phone and also available in online, so you can join it. You can maybe if you have a license, you can connect it. If you do not have a license, then you can use them as a trial version. But in the mobile app, you can run a very basic command. And the good thing is that you can access the, all these uh, uh, sensors in the in the device. So that maybe you can use this information for later uh, task. Uh, okay. So the default layout of the desktop layout of the uh, MATLAB environment will be something like this. So I am using 2018B version. Maybe there, can, there can be slight differences uh, depending on the, the version, but most of the cases you will have this tool scrape on top of it. So all the menu items will be there. And then you will have this uh, current folder uh, window. So this window will, you can see your folder, folder structure. So there you are in the in your directory of the computer. And then you have the command window where you can view the commands to, uh, as, uh, without, using, without creating script files. So you can view, view commands. So the prompt is something like this to break the understand signs. And then you have the workspace. So if you create variables or the answers, all these will be stored in this workspace. So the most of the time, so this will be the layout, but it may not be always the case. Okay, so let's start uh, the tutorial in, uh, in MATLAB from now on. Up to now, any, if you have any question or any comment you want to make, uh, maybe uh, whether the, the, my voice is clear or not, so you can do. Hello? Sorry. You... Well, audible, sir. Okay. Your voice is clear. So, okay, and then I will close this presentation and then, then start that session, okay? So let's stop share and press. Okay, so can you see the laptop screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so let uh, 
So let's start. So, so this is the tools. I hope everybody can see the mouse point. Yeah? Yes, there is. The moment. Okay, so this is the tool, tool strip. So there you can find different tabs in the MATLAB environment and different main items that can be used for different purposes. And this is the current folder. So the folder here you can see they are in the directory in the computer and then what are the files that is available. And this is the command window and the prompt is look like this and then the workspace. Uh, so, so this is the de default layout. Uh, not the uh, not the default layout, but this is the default. most of the default layout for the previous system. But for this one, the default layout is something like this. So I will use this one. So there's no difference. Only thing is uh, the workspace is here, and the current folder is here, and the command is here. And as I mentioned, so I will take I I have created uh, different uh, uh, live scripts for different chapters of that that book that I mentioned, Introduction to Bio, uh, MATLAB for Biologics. So I will go one by one. So the, let's start with command line uh, input. So this is the, I can, so the good thing with the, with the live script is that while uh, running, the, or the, you, can, you can create, so I will give you an introduction to how to create the, live script as well sometime later, but for the time being, so, so with the live script, I can run at the same time, uh, uh, you can, I can in, incorporate different uh, text and images as well. At the same time, so you can include the code, and for example here, so you can include the code and I can run this section, only this section and get the output in the, in the right hand side. Okay, so that's, uh, that's but of course this will take, uh, the, the speed will be a little bit less compared to the normal script. But anyway, so that will be good for sharing and then like a like webinar. Okay, so let's start with basics using command line. So the command line in, uh, is this one. So this is the command line. So the command line, so, so this is the prompt. So you, you can give commands in this. So first, MATLAB was introduced as a numerical computation, as a compu computer. The calculator, so you can use as a can, uh, MATLAB as a calculator in the command line and the command window. So all this, uh, and also with the uh, the good thing is you can have very lengthy commands in full. So you can write with parentheses and uh, uh, additions and up to very long lengthy uh, uh, expression in the command window. So that that's a good thing. And of course, it follows the order as the board mass. So if you can remember, in single is one Begu Ekadu. So, we were, so this is the way of uh, uh, computation done. If you, if you do not follow that, so of course, uh, you will get a different uh, solution, but that's strong. So the, 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 the method also follows the, this, this order. So if you first evaluate the brackets, and then the order, and then the division, and then the multiplication, and then the addition and then the subtract. So accordingly, you can write down your, of course, if you want to combine some of the expressions, you can use the round brackets, but we'll come back to later. So these are a couple of examples. Of, uh, so you can write this in type here. So I'm not going to type it here because it will take time, but very easily you can see that. So you can do the addition, subtraction, and then, uh, since this the method was initially developed for matrix multiplication, and then there are two different in the linear algebra multiplication of matrix is different multiplication of element by element. So therefore, to distinguish these two conditions, so you have this operation. So the operation can if you if you are not if you want to do only element by element multiplication, then you have to put this dot sign in front of all these operators. For example, if you want to get the power. Then you have to put the dot power just to get the element by element multiplication. It doesn't matter. It, it is you, you do not need to put that here. Why? So it, because it is, these are simple scalar values. Then uh, there's no difference by putting dot in front of the operator or not. You will get the same results. But as a practice, so it's, it's better to put that. Uh, then you will not lose anything. So if, if the other one is array then it uh, doesn't matter. Then you will, have, if you want the element by 
element multiplication, then as a practice, since you have that, so you could talk. Uh, but of course, if you, if you want the matrix multiplication, then you need to get rid, uh, remove this dot sign in front of the operator. Okay. So these are simple. So I can simply run it. Uh, so here actually you need to put this thing in the command line like this five plus hundred something like that. So it will give you the answer. But I'm not going to give, uh, type it here because it will take time. But you can type it. So I just uh, run this one, and the result will become here. So you, you need to type this into the command window and enter. So these are the results. So, okay. So this is simple cal calculator. So let's. Uh, so how what happens if you do the operations with arrays? So these are the arrays. We will discuss arrays in more detail later. But uh, as, uh, here, if you want to multiply the each element with the, uh, with the other element in the other array, then you have to use this dot in front of the multiplication operator. So then this uh, the result will be you will multiply each element one with the one of the next vector and the second element of the second element with next vector like that. So this multiplication is uh, element by element. But if you remove the dot, then some, this multiplication will be a matrix multiplication. So then if you look at this, so you have a problem. If, if anybody who knows linear algebra, so you cannot multiply this way, two vectors. Yeah. So why? So to multiply these vectors, then you need to have uh, the, the, uh, the uh, what's the, the row. The number of columns in the N should be equal to the number of rows in the in the second element, the second vector. So here, this is row is one one, but the columns is three one by three, and this one is one by three. So one by three you cannot multiply with one by three, one by three. So if you want to multiply, it should be three by one. So I hope you know Gini algebra, but that's simple. Anyway, so if, if I run this, so we will get an error for this one. For the first one, it, it has been evaluated. So you can see it's 1 into 4, 2 into 5, 3 into 6. That's been evaluated. But then there's an incorrect dimension, so matrix multiplication. So this is a matrix multiplication. So for that purpose, you have to the number of columns in the first matrix should be equal to the number of Cross in the second matrix. So, if you want to do that, you have to follow the rules of linear and press that. So that's a different task. And, uh, uh, but anyway, so keep in mind that. So, if you want to do the matrix multiplication, you have to follow the linear algebra rules. Okay. So, I will clear the output. And then, uh, so if you want, so the parentheses, so the parentheses are important in method. So these parentheses are different. There are different types of parentheses. So you have the round parentheses, square parentheses, and curly parentheses. So the round parentheses can be used for, for the uh, uh, grouping. Okay. So in, in algebraic calculations, you can create groups. So for that purpose, you can use the round uh, parentheses. Or else, you can use the round parentheses. If you create a function, then if you want to write arguments or the inputs to the input parameters of the function, so you'll put round parameters. We'll discuss that when we discuss functions. And or else, uh, if you want to get uh, any position or the element of a matrix or a vector, then you will use these round parameters. And then the other type of uh, parameters are the square. So the square parameters is, is used to create arrays, vectors, or matrices. So you can put any number of elements within square uh, uh, brackets, then it will be automatically an array. Okay. Uh, this can also be used to join two arrays concatenation. And then if you put two square, square brackets without putting anything inside, so that will create an empty matrix. Okay. And also uh, to delete a column or a row for a matrix, because this will create an uh, empty matrix. So we can assign that into a column or vector of a matrix. So then that will be deleted. 
or else to obtain multiple output from certain functions. So if you want to, look, when you create a function, function is a, is a kind of a script. If you take inputs, so the input should be provided within the round brackets, but it will create some outputs as well. So the output will be provided in the, in the, in the syntax. You have to write outputs in square brackets. So we will discuss that later. And then the other important brackets are the curl brackets. So this has been used for to construct a cell array. So we will discuss that what is a cell array. And also this can be used to access the, the content within the cell array as well. So the cell array is a kind of collection of different data. So in most of the cases, the matrix, uh, the, the, the square brackets and the, the arrays, all the arrays will be with the same type of data. But if you want to create a array with different type of data. So it can be strings, it can be numbers, it can be dates, then it's better to go with the cell array. Okay. So we will discuss that later, but initially this is for the so as I mentioned, so you can use the round bracket for grouping. So this will be first uh, the output will be so uh, according to the order. So the First, uh, the uh, Mat Mat MATLAB will ex uh, evaluate the fun uh, the, uh, whatever the expressions inside the brackets. And then it will multiply something like that. Of course, you have you cannot use something like this three into six plus four. So you have to put the multiplication sign in front of it, something like this. Okay. So this purpose, if you run this. You will get the same result because this is not a vector. So this is just the expression of uh, a grouping of two kind of uh, two numbers. Therefore, the multiplication of element by multiplication element by element also the same as matrix multiplication. So this is not a matrix or a vector. So you can use in this with this. But if it is a vector, of course, by multiplying with the scalar will not be a problem. But then the multiplication of Another vector, then you have to follow other linear rules. And uh, while if you, you can give all these commands into the, so even though I'm just running this section by clicking here, but uh, the ideally you have to put this into the command window. Then uh, when you put this and uh, type this into the command window and press enter, you will get the result, like answer. And it will be automatically stored in a variable now answer if you if you do not assign this thing to a, another variable that will be the uh, uh, a ms will be the variable so for example if you store the last uh, 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 last execution of the expression so here you can see so this is the workspace you can have a look what are the the things that we have created uh, in the workspace so all the execution output will be stored in the uh, workspace. So you can see the answer is 30. So this is the last one. So if you want to access the command history, so then uh, you can use up and down arrows. So if you simply click up arrow, so you can see all these commands. Okay. So this is uh, today I have entered this. These are the, the uh, yesterday the commands that I had when I do the, the preparation. Okay. So you can then Go to the whatever the command, and then you can enter to uh, put that into the command prompt. So that's easy way to go to the previous commands. Okay, and or else if you want to uh, here you cannot see any command history window. So if you want to go, if you want to see the command history window, then what you can do is you can use the, the home tab, and then you can go to the layout, and then you can create dot. Uh, so the command history will be docked in some manner. So we will be docked, and you can use uh, all the information, all the all the command commands that you have put into the command window, and you can simply grab and put this into the command window to if you want to execute again. Okay, grab it and put that into the command. It will be there. Okay. Sorry, close it. And uh, another good practice, especially when you write scripts, so the script is a collection of uh, uh, functions or the collection of uh, uh, 
commands in a simple map, uh, map file, M file. Okay. But uh, in that situation, it's better to put co uh, comments, comments in the sense, then you can understand what we have done with this command. What, by, by, by execution this, what is this? What, we can simply give a command, it will not be executed in that matter. It will be taken as a, as a comment. Okay. So the comments can be put by using this uh, sign, percentage sign. So this is if you want to, this is basically the mean of four cell, four values. So this is mean length, something like that. You can put. So if I execute, it will not be. Uh, so uh, with the with the with this line, actually, you can create breakpoints as well. So we will talk about that later. But if you want to execute, then this it will select the section of the live script, and then if I double click, it will be executed, and the answers will be shown in the uh, right hand side. Even though, so the good practice is that if you are studying, or if you are learning a new concept, a new uh, program, or pro, uh, any any thing, then better to start with simple. Then you know what is the results, what is the uh, what should be the results. Then you can easily compare whether it's true or not. So that's why I have always been put very simple examples. And uh, other type of uh, command that you can put into the command window is the constant trigonometric functions, logs, and exponents. And these are very basic commands available. So, and even numerical constants are come as a function. So, some functions you can, you may not give any input. Some functions you will give input. For example, pi is a function. It will not take any inputs, but it will. If, if you execute, if you put that in uh, a command window, it will give you what's the value of pi. So if you want to get the area of a circle, that's pi r squared, then r is radius is three, then you can use the pi as this pi. So this will be a function in MATLAB, in built function. Okay. And similarly, there are trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, likewise. So the sine, if you if you use sin. So this is the pi should be given in radians. If you use S I N D, then the, the value of the argument should be in degree. Likewise, you can uh, find a lot of uh, trigonometric functions uh, or mo most of the trigonometric functions. And uh, of course, when you do uh, with uh, when you do uh, compute computations with MATLAB, you have to re keep in mind that. So the, the, all these representations, representations are numbers are represented as floating point numbers. So there can be rounding errors because this is a digital system. You cannot uh, store the value, exact value as this. For example, there are values, for example, pi. Pi is infinite series. So you cannot is, uh, store that value in a finite way. So therefore, always you will get some uh, rounding errors. In this representation, because the, these numbers will be represented in the computer as zeros and ones, but therefore there's a limitation. So we have the limitations that will not uh, they are represent the exact values of especially irrational numbers. And for example, if you execute this one minus two over third, one minus one over third, theoretically this should be equal to zero, but you know that one over three and two over three. So they are infinite series. It will be 0 0.3333 infinite. And the one is 0 0.66 so infinite. So therefore it cannot represent in the in the digital part of it, in the digital signal, as a digital signal. So this will create a, therefore, it will create an error. But error, error can be very, very small. So you can see that it is 5.5 e to the power minus 70. So this is the the, the exponent is 10 to the power minus so it's a very very small number but still it is an approximate but therefore if you want to so if you want to do a compare comparing if you want to compare with the one variable with the other the good thing is that you create the difference and then you did you take that difference less than very very small number so that you can pre, you can provide a degree of tolerance if it is 10, 10 to the power minus 15 is the tolerance. Of course, you can assume that these two are equal. 
that's how uh, that is the workaround uh, in most of the, the computational methods. I hope so. If you uh, you can understand that situation, okay. This is especially when there's uh, the when there's a number that cannot be represented in, in as a finite number, as as finite value. So if you want to more the one one thing you can do is you can create you can put doc whatever the the uh, special thing that you want to know in the command prompt that will open the definite method to the method that I'm not going to do here. But if you want, you can simply do it. And then the other one is the important one is the computation is the log. But if, uh, the log usually in in in, in other examples the log is is base 10 but here log when the command log is given so that is log base e log natural actually it's usually we write as ln but in matlab it is log but if you want to take the base 10 then you have to use the log 10 function so this is the function and then exp is the euler's number that is e 2.78183 and it's a function you can use it if you want to do the E value, then exp1. If you want to take the e square, then exp2 likewise. So you have to provide that uh, as an argument. Okay, so this is e. Uh, you can get what is exp2, that is uh, 2.713 squared. This is the value. And you can see that. So the exp1, that is actually the value of e. And if you take the log of that, that is log natural, that should be one. And log 10, if you take the log 10 base, this is the value of uh, log, number, uh, num log number of e, uh, e, value of e. And if you take the 10 of log 10 base, that should be one. Okay. And most of the time, so up to now, we haven't assigned any com uh, computed value to any variable. So all stored in the, uh, the default variable AMS. So it will be updating, updating. But if you want to keep this for some time, then what you can do is you can give a name variable. Then variable, so you do not, in MATLAB, like, like other, not like in other languages, you do not need to previously define these variables. You can straight forward, you can use the variable name and you can assign a value, something like that. You do not need to define before. Okay, so this is uh, the variable and this is the value. And this is another variable value. If you want to multiply this, but this with this one, so you can use the variable to multiplication. And this can this will be stored in the workspace, and you can do editing by simply going to the value. For example, here. So this is the convert MYPH. You can do editing here, double click and, and or else you can use right click and then edit them. You can update it and you the, then you can, after updating, you can use the command. Uh, if, 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 you, if you put this into the command window, so you can use the arrow keys to go back and execute it. So that, uh, that will create the, the repetition will be easy. Okay, you can use the command history, go to the, this uh, uh, execution, this uh, command, and then you can use after updating these values, you can do it. Then you get the updated result like that. And uh, there are a couple of rules for naming variables. So these are case sensitive. So if you use simple D, and it is not the same as the capital D. So you have to start with the letter, uh, and uh, after the letter, you can have anything, any combination. And of course, you, know, you should not put spaces cannot be one of the 20 MATLAB keywords. So these keywords are kind of four end loops. This has been used for four end. So if I, if you want to find out what are the keywords, this is the command, is keyword. And of course, the, you, you can give the, uh, you can, the, the variable can be of this length, but it should be not more than this one. So that can be taken for the MATLAB implementation. So name, length, max. So if you type this command, so it will give you what is the maximum uh, letters, characters that you can have. For example, in this 2018B, the variable can have maximum of 63. 
and these are the keywords. So you cannot have these keywords as as variables. Break case, all this has been used for different other purposes. That's why you cannot use it. And most of the cases, it's better to use this camel case. Camel case is uh, is is uh, every word, each word will be the first word will be started with a simple letter, but the rest of the word will be will start with a capital letter, and then you can combine it out space. For example, wind speed miles. So this is wind speed in miles in miles per hour. So then wind is the first word. So it's not the capitalized, the rest of the words are capitalized. So it's better to adhere to one of these, then you can follow. And the, uh, the, so the important thing is you need to uh, remember is the program will allow you to name a variable, the same name as the existing uh, function it meant. So these, these are keywords, but they can be function. So if you write, if you, assign a value for one of the existing functions, then that function will, the, the value will be taken as the, the uh, function value, as the, as, the, as, the, as the new value. So it will override the previous built-in function. For example, pi is the built-in value of pi is 3.1.1. But if you assign a value of 250, then if you, uh, if you take pi, if you print pi to the command display again, command window, so you will get 250 instead of 3.1.4. So that's it. So be careful that think about that if you somehow. So therefore, you please try to avoid assigning uh, names of variables to existing functions. So for example, if I run this, so you can see that. So the first answer is the pi that we haven't assigned, so it's 3.5.6. And then we have assigned pi as 250. Then if you take the pi again, so it will be 250. So if you assume that it is 3.14, then you get a completely wrong answer. But if you clear pi, then it will clear only the assigned bar. But the pi function will be there, built-in built function, it will be there. So after that, after clearing pi, so this will clear only the, the created pi. But the, then if you plot pi, so you go back to the original default value. OK? So if, therefore, the, it's better to always check whether this is, has been used. So for that purpose, you can use this exist command. So exist check name, so if it is there, so you get different numbers. If it is not there, you get zero. But uh, uh, depending on the number, it will be maybe built-in function, it will be maybe a folder, uh, something like some other thing. So that, that has a value, but if you want to, get more details, what you can do is you can always go help on Nexus. Okay, so if you type, then it will give you, it will open a window, a small window, and it will give you all the syntax, what are these uh, output values, what, what are these output values corresponding, like that. Okay, so that's another example. And after creating, sometimes you need to save your work. Sometimes maybe you need to store this variable so that you can load it next time. You can start from there. So therefore, you can use few. And also, if you want to store all these commands that you have uh, input to the command window, that you have put into the command window. So if you want to store this, you can use this diary function. So, but of course, you have to start this function before before entering any of this. So maybe uh, to the, maybe to the one if I have started, then all will be stored until I say diary form. So all these variables, uh, all these commands that I have put into the command will be stored in the my text work out uh, file. Okay. So I'm not going to run it here. And of course, the saved location will be the current present working directory. So that can be accessed by typing pwd. That's basically printing working directory. So I am at this uh, directory. So that's true. The presentation that left you for. So this will be um, uh, saved in that. Okay. So this is that. And you can save, maybe you can save everything as it is, or else maybe you can save only the variables that you need. So then the format is this. 
So you save, put the name of the file, and put all the variables that you need to save. Then it will not save unnecessary variables into the file. So that's another way. And again, it is important to clear variables from workspace. So if you start a different computation, different uh, algorithm, uh, to, uh, if you want to do um, different exercise, then always better to clear all the variables that you have created before. That can be used for clear, clear variables, clear paths. Or else if you want to clear only a set of variables, then you can use the clear command with all these variables. Uh, you can simply give the variable names so that it will clear only those variables, the rest of them will be there. For that purpose, you can have, also you can have these uh, expressions. For example, everything start from A can be uh, cleared by using this command. And if you want to clear the command window, all this, then you can use the CLC. But it will not clear the workspace variables, but it will clear the uh, only, for example, if I type CLC, then enter, it will clear the command window. Okay. And if you want to find the what type of variables are in, so you can write who in the command window, if you, and then if you enter, so you will see all variables that is in the workspace. So of course, you can see that in the workspace, but if you want to see in the command window, so this is the command. And if you put whose, then it will give you more information. What is the type, what is the class, what is the byte size, and what is what dimension is it, all the attributes will be given. Okay, so that's all for command line. Uh, what should we do? do we, should we take um, uh, questions from now for this section? Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can raise your hand. We will enable you to speak so you can unmute and uh, ask the question. Or else maybe we should do the questions at the end. At least uh, there is clear or the screen is too much or slow or is it too basic? But of course we should start with too basic, then we will get dual increase. But the audience can be of different uh, levels. Okay, so I, actually I cannot see any, uh, because I'm sharing, so I cannot see any raised hands. Is there raised hands, uh, uh, No, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, okay then let's continue. Yes. So, the, so I will close this one, and then I will start the arrays. This is see you sir, raise hand. Somebody raise hand. Uh, uh, thank you very much for excellent presentation. Uh, my question is if you are to multiply a decimal number, like say 5.5 by 2, how do you write it? Could you explain it, please? You can say a decimal number, and then what is the difference between decimal point and the multi multiplication? Dot? How and do you write, say, 5.5 .5 by 2? How do you write it? In the command window, that's 5.5, yeah, 5, yeah. 5, yeah. 5, yeah. 5, 5, 5, 5, 2. Yeah. 5.5, 5.52. Something like that. You can just simplify it. Yeah, but you don't need that dot for that, yeah? Dot, dot star? Oh, no, 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 that's why I mentioned. So the, the dot is, so since these are scale numbers, so it's, you don't need dot in front of it. All right, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you don't need, but if it is, it's better to, as a practice, better to keep it, because then you will not lose when, when, they, when you have these the element by element multiplications, then you will not lose, but most of the cases, so the, these, these guys uh, say that it's better to practice to put dot in front of it. Most of the multiplication will be of element by element. But uh, uh, if you if you uh, I mean if you have that in mind, then you don't need to put this dot in front of it. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Sorry. That's only if you do the matrix multiplication. If you have a vector or a vector, then you have to definitely you have to get rid of it. But if you need the vector vector, but if you need only the dot multiplication, eleven by eleven multiplication between these vectors, then you have to put dot. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue with arrays and matrices. So this is very important because this. Uh, will be most uh, mostly this will be used for uh, most of the um, data will be of this type. So the matrix, there is no distinct, distinction between matrix and an array. So the both will be the same. So the matrix can be of different dimensions, three by two, three by four, four by four. Array can also be with different dimensions. So the size can is defined as the row num row into column, the number of rows. The number of columns and the location of any, any element in the matrix can be given as the row and the column number. So the first element of the matrix is one one, and the index is one. So the, you can access these elements in two different ways. You can access this with the subscripts by giving the row and the column number, or else index values. The index values start from the one first top left corner and then going along the columns, increasing one, two, three, four, like that. And then you go to the next column, then continue, and the third column, that's the index. So you will have an uh, increasing number for indexes, but for the 11, using subscripts, then you have to give the row and the column number in round brackets. Okay. So we will discuss that more in detail. And uh, we can, of, of course, create multi-dimensional multi arrays. So depending on the data sets you have, you will definitely come around. And the, for example, three dimensional arrays, you have row, column, and the third dimension will be, can be a page or the sheet. So you can assume that the, in, imag you can imagine in the stack of pages with two, two, two images stacked as a pages, or something like that. And the vector is one dimensional array. So how do we manipulate, uh, create and manipulate? So the vectors can be of two different types. It can be a raw vector. So the raw vector, as I mentioned, you can, you can simply include uh, whatever the elements, the values you needed as a, ve as a vector inside square brackets. So that will create a raw vector. And if you want to create, create a column vector, what you need to do is to put semicolon in front of it. Or else you have to write in this way, in the command line or in the script, you can even write two in the next line, four and six. So if I run this, you can even see that. Okay, this is called grapevine. So if I run this, so you will see the first one will create the raw vector and the second one create a column vector. And at the same time, if you, without using semicolons, but using different lines, you can create a column vector. And if you, you can look these, Values, what are these values? Of course, I'll clear first uh, uh, all the variables. Space. That's clear. And then I run it again. So all these are there. Then if you go back and the, the workspace, you can see that even though you created this in this format without putting semicolon, but in the workspace, it, it is represented as a semicolon uh, separated. Uh, vector. So that's basically a column vector. And uh, this uh, display format can be of different types. For example, so the, this is the, uh, these two elements can be uh, represented in different formats. Okay, different decimal numbers. So if I run it very quickly, so the V3 is represented in this way. This is a raw vector of two values. And you say they are the same because I have used short. Short is you uh, represent anything with four decimal points. So that's why it is there. And this, if you since you have two different uh, uh, range of values, so the idea is to use four decimal values. So the four decimal values to represent four decimal values. This point. So what you have to do is you have to multiply that by ten to the power three. So this is the representation. Then. Uh, this will be represented in four decimal places, and this is also the four decimal places according. So you have to 
if uh, you know how, how to focus on this, you can see the numbers, so this is how to do that. But sometimes you need the, the band format. Band format is you, you, you need two digits after the, the decimal point, so that two decimal point. So if you use, if you change, so by, if you want to change the format, you can simply add into the command form, format band. So after that, all these will be represented in band format. So the band format is 12.3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. So we have two decimal points after the decimal. Point. And then if you want to go, if you want to go back to the short uh, representation, so you can simply change it back to the, by uh, simply typing format short. So if you need more information, so what are the available uh, arguments? So simply what you can do is you go and click format, sorry, uh, format, Click on it and then right click and take help. So there are all these style formats are there. Okay. So I'm not going to do everything. And then the transpose of a vector. So if you have a vector, vector is a one dimensional array. The transpose is, for example, if you want to convert that in, if it is a row vector, you want to convert it into column. If it's column vector, you want to convert that into row vector. So the transpose is doing that. And for a matrix, basically, if you have the i and j element will be goes to j and i. So that's a swapping, a way of swapping. So if you know linear algebra, you know what I mean. So I'm not going to explain in detail. So this is v5, and this we have created a raw vector. And then, so there are two ways we can do. The one way is to use this transpose command. Transpose, put the v5 with the raw vector, then it will be converted into the column vector, but uh, or else in shorthand, what you can do is you can V5 and put the single quotation, mark. single quotation, that is the transpose mark, uh, transpose command. So then it will, be, it will convert the uh, V5 raw vector into a column vector, okay? And uh, the other important thing uh, is the sequences. So, so you can create sequences. Most of the cases you need sequences, especially when you do experiments with Different uh, dilution experiments, etc. So you will, you have to create a set of uh, sequences. So we can use the colon operator to create sequences. So the if you if you uh, of course you can give the step size in between. If you do not give the step size in between, then the default size step size will be one. So this will be create five to eleven uh, from numbers from five to eleven by taking step of one five six seven eight nine like that. So you can give the step in between, and also you can have the negative step. So you can start in the low, larger value and go down. So if I run this section, so you can see the first one, you will start from five, step one, and going to up to 11. This is not showing the dot three dot means to go there. I'm not going to show it. But here you can see 0.6, and the step is 0.1 up to 1, so it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7, like that. And here, one starting from one, and you have the negative state. So it should be reduced 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.6 up to the zero. What happened, this, what happened to this one? So you start from three, and you have to end at one. So this will not happen. So what happened? So what is the result? So you can see that the result is empty matrix. Why? Because three, uh, if you take a positive 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.2, it should be 3.2. So it's not, now we are going to, Go to one, so therefore it will not execute. So it will only create an empty matrix, empty vector. Okay. And then uh, two or more sequences can be combined in one vector. So this is uh, uh, two or more sequences. So this is a vector. So to to create a vector, so you can use this, for example. So this is one part. So there's there's a space here. So this sequence will be created, and then there's another sequence in between that will be created with this condition. And then there's another space, and then there will be another sequence. All these sequences can be concatenated into create a uh, complex vector. So this vector is something like this: one, two, three, four, five, ninety-nine minus. So if I, if you want to see more, as you can see, so you can click it here, and you can go further. Something like that. Okay. And uh, if you want to suppress, so if you want to create this one, so 
So this has been created, but it is not coming out to the uh, as, a, as an output. So that is actually, even though it is not coming here, this is, it is the same if I put this into the command window. So it will not show anything output, but the web, in the workspace, so there will be something. For, for example, the last execution should be stored in the ANS variable. So the ANS variable, you can see that one, two, three, four. It is not there because it is suppressed by putting this semicolon. So these are important when you uh, when you are writing a script. But sometimes the intermediate computation you don't need. So what you need to do is you simply put uh, semicolon, and only if you want to take something out to the command window, then you simply remove that semicolon. Okay. So so now we know how to create a vector. And then what? And then also important how to extract subset of vectors. So you have different different vectors of different lengths, but if you want to extract part of it, how we can do? There are two different ways, as I mentioned. So you have the, the numbering of the elements is of two types. You can use the index method, or you can use the subscript methods. If you are using the index methods, linear index, so the each value in the vector has an associate linear index starting from one, first column, first row. And it goes uh, down, going down the clock. Okay. And uh, what you need to, if you want to extract whatever the variable, you need to put that in the round brackets. If you want to create a vector, you, you are using the square brackets. But if you want to get, get elements, you have to put the index, either index or the subscripts within round bracket. So this is the creation of the raw vector. And and the, we have name as the dog weight, so this is the thing kilogram. I think. And if you want to find out what is the first animal, what is the, the weight, uh, weight of first animal? So this is the first element, and this is the fourth element. And uh, if you create a column vector, similarly, it will be the same. Okay. And you can use this end command to access the last. If you did, assume that you have a large number of data sets. And you don't know then what's the number of data set, but you know the what you want to take the last element of that. Then you can simply put n. If you want to take the uh, two elements before the last one, then you what you can do is you can put n minus two. So very easily you can access the both ends. And the groups of values can be extracted as well. So the groups of values can be extracted. You can put as a vector or a sequence inside the parentheses. For example, if you want to get the, so this sequence will generate one, the step is two, one, three, five. So if you want to get the position in one, three, five, values of the one, three, five, the position as the, uh, in the, in the dog weight uh, vector. So this is the command. Or else if you want to get one, two, four. So this is a sequence, this is an array. So both ways work. And uh, uh, this, uh, you can extract the values corresponding to these positions. Okay. So the one, three, five. So these are the values. Let me go back. Uh, you can see that. And then the frog weeks. So these are one, two, four. One, two, and four. So these are one. Yeah, right. it. Yeah, one, two, and four. And the other method is the subscript. So the first subscript, then you need to provide the row and the column now. So when this is a row vector or column vector, so that's um, kind of easy. So of course, that will give you some error if you are depending on the row or column vector. But it's better to use this notation when you are accessing a matrix. For example, here, what will happen? So the dog weight one one. So the one first row, first column, so there's a value. First row, fourth column, so there's a value because it's a row vector. But the third one, it, uh, it, 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 it wants the second row, first element. But of course, there's no second row because it's a row vector. So then you will be the given error. Okay. How to augmenting a vector? So sometimes uh, you have created a vector. So depending on the, the experiments, you will get more and more data later. Then you need to incorporate that data into the same vector. So there, that can be done. And simply you can assign, you can create uh, the, the vector of uh, 
the position and then you can assign the position value. Then, for example, since the dog vector has five uh, elements and the sixth element, of course, you can give. Of course, if you define the tenth element and if you assign the tenth element some value, then the rest of the values from six to ten will be set to zero. Automatically, it will be set to zero. So wet. So we assigned initially it was uh, only four lengths up to one, two, three, four, five, sorry, four, one, five, and then we assigned the sixth one at 1.5. Is there now? What happens if you have assigned the ten? Tenth element as 1.8. So this is that. So the tenth element will be 1.8, but uh, from 6 to 10. So you haven't assigned anything, so it will automatically set to zero. Something like that. So let's talk about mathematical operations that can be done using matrices and arrays. This is important, of course. Uh, a little bit knowledge of uh, linear price uh, should be uh, needed. So the Let's talk about how we can multiply. So two ways of multiplications, that's matrix multiplications and the element by element multiplication. So then the dot notation is important when you deal with the multiplication of vectors or the matrices. So if you don't, if you want to do the matrix linear algebra multiplication, then you have to use the, without the dot in front of the operator, you have to use A to B. But if you want to do element by element, then you have to put the dot in front of the operator. Otherwise, you will get totally two different results. Okay, And of course, you need to have the number of elements should be the same if you want to multiply. Vectors. Okay, And uh, so this is an example for a vector. So, and then this is the total E. So this is a crop, uh, uh, this is a column vector. So you can see that this is a column vector. This is a row vector. And if you want to multiply element to element, element by element, of course, if you want to simply multiply a row vector with row vector and a column vector with column vector, so you can use with dot products. Dot product, that's basically dot into the multiplication. This will give you the element by element multiplication. No problem. Both will have the same, because this is the same into same, same number of elements are there. So you can do it very easy. But if you want to do the matrix vector multiplication, then you have to use without the dot. So, but to do that, so this is possible. Why? So this is uh, the prop, uh, prop project is three, one by three vector and the total yield is three by one vector. So the multiplication is possible in this case. Why? The number of columns in the first, uh, first matrix or the vector is same as the number of rows in the second vector. One by three, three by one. So this is possible. So this will give you an answer. Okay, the multiplication is done. Uh, I, I have a picture I will show you that uh, the order of multiplication. So you, I will show that later. But anyway, so this is followed by the matrix vector multiplication. And the multiplying a column vector by a row vector. So this is, uh, so this can be done. So let's check what happens. So this is the column vector and this is a row vector. So you can see even if I uh, put my mouse point on it, so this is a raw vector, this is a column vector. And this is the element by element multiplication, and this is the row, I'm oh, sorry, uh, vector or the matrix multiplication. So what will happen? So the element by element multiplication, no problem. So this is uh, three by three. And it will be something like this. Then here you will have three by one, and here one by three. So that's first word. Three by one, one by three. Then three by three it should give a three by three answer. Here it will be one by one answer. One by three, three by one. The final result will be one by one. So that's um, uh, thirty-four. And here, when you do the matrix multiplication, it's one by three. Sorry, three by one. So this is three by one, one by three. So the final result should be three by three. Okay, so the both results are the same in this case. And this is the diagram that I just mentioned. So this is so this is how you do. So this is actually tally with the linear algebra. 
So the element by element multiplication is simple. So you take the one element and then you multiply with the corresponding element of the next vector a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3. And similarly, if you multiply with the row and the column vector, then you multiply a1 with b1 and a1 with b2, a1 with b3. A1 will be multiplied all three. The A2 will be multiplied all three elements of the other uh, column vector. Likewise, this is, this is the order. And if you do the multiplication in matrix multiplication, then you cannot do multiplication in this order because this is one by three and this is one by three. You cannot multiply one by three, one by three. You have to have one by three into three by one, something like this. One by three, three by one. Then the multiplication is the, the matrix format, A1, B1 multiplied, and then you add to that A2, B2, and add to that A3, B3. So that is actually the dot product in, 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 in the algebra. So that you need to know all this how uh, matrix multiplication. And similarly, so if you multiply with the column vector with the row vector, so you will multiply the B1 with all these elements, and then V2 with all these elements. This is the element by element multiplication. So that's easy. And if you multiply the same thing with the, uh, with the element by element multiplication as a raw vector, the same. So you multiply the first element with the first element of the second vector, second element, second element, third element, third element. But the matrix multiplications, you cannot multiply here because this is three by one and this is three by one. So three by one should be multiplied by one by three, something like this. But three by one, three by one, you can have uh, matrix dimensions are not accurate. But here you can three by one, one by three. Then the multiplication will give you the same type of multiplication as this. So then the multiplication should be A1, B1, A2, B2, A2, B1. Uh, all these elements will be multiplied even in the matrix multiplication. So that you have to somehow um, remember. So that's linear algebra. Okay. And of course, this multiplica, uh, multi matrix multiplication is very, very important. So you will see when I do an example. So let's talk about one dimensional arrays. So the element by element. So the division, I'm not going to divide do the division because it's, uh, it's complicated. But of course, element by element division is same. So you simply divide each element by the element of the uh, corresponding element of the other vector. That can be done. So we are, we are only doing that part. Okay. I don't want to do the complicated division of matrices here. Okay, so that, that is easy. So it's easy to understand. All of the values will be divided, a corresponding value will be divided by the corresponding element of the other vector. So the addition and subtraction, that's easy. Nothing, it's for the matrices and even both methods will, be, will give you the same. Either whether you use the dot or without using the dot. So the, of course, one only thing is we need to have the same uh, number of elements in both uh, matrices or vectors. Okay. And then creating and manipulating matrices. So, how to create matrices? So, that we know. So, the matrix refer to any. So, this is uh, now we are going to go to the matrix, not vectors. Refer to any square or rectangular array of data. So the vector is a special case of one dimension. And within square brackets, you can write values of row vectors separated by semicolons. Or every row must have the same number of elements. Okay. So that's how we can create a matrix. So for example, this is a matrix, patient B. So within the square matrix, the square brackets, you have to write values of row vectors. So the values of row vectors. So draw vectors, either you can put commas or you can simply separate it. So the four elements of the first row, and then if you put the semicolon, then you will go to the next column, sorry, next row. So you can see that when you when we create the vector, so the column vector, what we did was put each semicolon for each of these elements. Then it will create it, it was creating a, a column vector. But here, so you create the row and then put the semicolon to go to the Next row, and then the semicolon go to the next row. Similarly, you can create the, in, the, in that way, or you can create simply typing in that way. You type the next uh, elements in the next as a new line. 
So then, if you run this, dot will create a uh, main, two types of matrix. And or else you can create uh, an empty matrix first, and then you can open it, and then you can add it. Add command. So this is, uh, if I go back to this, the first, uh, so this is the matrix, patient HP. So four by four matrix, and this is the similar way to construct a matrix. So you have now four by three matrix, four by three, yeah, four by four. Uh, as I mentioned, another way to create is you create the empty matrix and then open empty matrix, then it will open something like this. Then you can put elements here. So if I put here, then automatically it will put the rest of the, so it will, it will take as the last element of the row and the column. For example, if I click here and put something here, the, all these will be set to zero up to this point because we need to create a matrix, something like that. Then of course you can add here as well. So that way also you can create an empty matrix. Okay. Sorry, you can create a, you can start with the empty matrix and then you can put whatever the elements that uh, places that are needed. So adding data to an existing matrix. So that is that is known as the concatenate. How we can do? So for example, so you have the patient HP, if you want to add a separate uh, row to this uh, already created vector, that can be done. Of course, well, you have to follow the rules. So the, the, the number of columns in this should be equal to the number of columns. And then it is a separate column. So this will be then, since the first one it was four by four, now we, since we are adding one by four, so it should be five by four, the final result. Adding new column of data, then again, so you have to, for the, if you want to add a row, you use the semicolon. If you want to add a column, so you use space. So simple as that. And another way to create, a, for example, in certain situations, so you, you can uh, create a basic element, and that element, or that element in the sense vector, that will be repeated in some ways. So for that purpose, you can use this rep mat, repeating matrix command. So you create a column vector, one to four, and then you repeat it this column vector one times column and three, sorry, one times in the row direction and three times the column direction, something like that. So let me run this and then check. So from the first, so we have, this one, the patient HP. So now we have added an additional row, that row is there. And there, this is how you can create a row vector. And then you can create, uh, you have the now, in this you have now, it is a five by four, and we have created a row with five by one. So therefore we can easily put this into the, our new uh, previously created patient uh, uh, vector, sorry, patient matrix. So what you can do is you can simply put that as a column. So then the final result will be something like this, all ES data. And then what we can do is, so this is that. So it will be now five by five. And if you want to add another column, so this is how we can create a column different way. So this is another way and this is another. So you can store three, four, five, six. So you can simply add to the existing all HP data to create all HP data new as five by six. Okay. And here, so the column, you have, you have created a one column, one to four, and it is suppressed. So you cannot see it here, but of course now we know this will create a sequence, one, two, three, four. But since you have this transpose, the uh, single quotation, single quotation, and, uh, top of it, so this will convert it into a column vector, one, two, three, four. And the rep map is, what the rep map is doing is you take that column vector and you, you start, uh, you replicate that in the one direction in this, this way and three direction in this way. So one direction in this way means it's as it is, but three columns. The other example, it, it is two direction in the, the this way, vertically, and one direction the other way. So it is one column, but two in this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I hope it is clear for you. Okay, so let's talk about matrix dimensions. 
size of the variables is displayed in that space. So the dimensions can be uh, uh, obtained by this size command. So this is, uh, we have created a big data of uh, metrics and then you, you can access by the command by, by simply running size big data. So that will give you the rows and columns, okay, number of rows and columns. And of course, if, we, if, you, if you want to act, assign this into two different variables, so this is the way to do that. So then the size, the row will be stored in this and the column numbers will be stored in this. And if you want to get the total number of elements of this uh, matrix, so this is the command, number of elements, number. So that will give the total number in 375. That is basically three into 125. And uh, if you want to get the which one is, is the lengthy, whether the row or column, then you can use the length command. So that will give the uh, which one, uh, whichever the big larger one of the columns and row. Here, the columns are the rows are the largest. So it will be the, this. And also, you can use the reshape and transpose of a matrix. So the reshaping is basically you create number of elements, and then you can use that number of elements to create. Uh, uh, different shaped matrix. For example, here we have one to 90, one vector of 90 elements. Then what we can do is we can reshape this into a 10 to nine grid. The same number of elements, 10 to nine, the 10 rows, nine columns. And if you want to get it, uh, the, the nine rows, 10 columns, then you can simply take the transpose of this one. Similarly, we can create the matrix of one to 16. So this is another row vector. And if you want to take the uh, odd, odd row and even row, what you can do is so one to 16. So if you the, divide this into two, so it will be converted to two into eight. So it will be automatically converted into row n because the numbers are going from in this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, column direction. The index are always numbering in this way, okay? So therefore, on the top row will be the odd values, the second row will be the even values. And if you want to convert that into uh, columns, so we we'll simply take the you know, transpose of it. So you have the odd column and the even column. Okay. So this is uh, just to show you. So this is the good thing with the live script. So you can incorporate the uh, figures into your script, but this cannot be done in the normal script. So this will not be executed even if you execute the whole thing. So only the code sections will be executed. This is for, so this is the indices, numbering of indices in this order, one, two, three, four, five, six, as columns starting from the top left. But subscripts are very easy to understand because it's uh, it's given the first one, first subscript is the row number, and the second one is the column number. For example, here is the fourth row, third column. Okay. So therefore, similarly, you can now you should be able to access all, all of these elements. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to run this here because, yeah, we have money out of time. Anyway, uh, so the colon operator is important when accessing multiple. Similarly, so since here we only access one or two elements, so one element actually, six is index and three, two is the column and the row and the column. So you will get only one element. But similarly, you can use the column operator and do a sequence to get the to access the all uh, set of elements. So you can use the index methods. So that if you index methods, if you use index methods, so basically you will get the according to the index numbers. The indices are this way. So these will be the numbers. The order of the number will be in this pattern. But if you want to get it uh, using subscript methods, for example, if you want to access all the values in the first row. So this is, if you put this comma, uh, the semicolon only, so this will give you all the columns as a, as a general expression. This, this is all the columns. The first subscript is for rows and the second row subscript is for column. And if you put only this semi, uh, column sign, that means all the columns. And this is the first row. And if you want to take the, all the third column, so you put the third as the column section, and you put the colon in the row section, so all the columns, and the uh, all the all the sorry all the rows in the third column. And if you want to take the first uh, square, two by two square, so this is how you can do. 
Da ist bei Randis. Okay, we are undefined because it, we have to run this beforehand. Then, it, then only it will get uh, defined. This value should be there. Otherwise, you will encounter an error. Okay, now you can see. So all these are uh, observed. Okay. Whatever the elements are, we can have it here, depending on that. So for example, this is the one by two, one by two vector of the dry weight vector. So where's the dry weight vector? I think I have clear it. But anyway, so that's simple. Okay. So that's the way. And then for different built-in matrices are there. For example, if you want to create all the zeros, all the ones, and the identity matrix and the random numbers, uh, random integer numbers. So these functions can be create different number of different uh, uh, types of matrices very easily, quickly. For example, if you put zeros three, so this will be three by three square matrix and zeros two by four, this will be two by four rectangular matrix. If you put single, single argument, so it will be three by three square matrix. But if you put two arguments, that will be the number of rows and number of columns, something like that. So, so you can see this zeros three, all the zeros three by three, two by four zeros, and ones two by two, ones four by five, ones four by five, and I uh, I can I means identity matrix. That's all the diagonal means are one, and the rest are zero. And I if you if you Put i in, the, in a rectangular level, then the main diagonal will have one, so the rest of the will be zero. And this is the random number generated four by four random integer number from zero to from one to 49. Maximum value is given as the first argument, and the, the rest is the number of rows and the columns. So this is that. So the it will generate random integer between one and 49 with four by four. And the random integer. 25, 6, since you are given only a uh, single argument as the 2 and 3, so it will be created, the, the values will be 1 to 25, but it will be a square matrix 6 by 6. And then if you give a random, so this is, there's no i here, this, this will generate a random number of 3 by 3 matrix, a random number of 0 to 1, so that's the default. So okay, if you want to generate a random number between 0 and 1 with different dimensions, so this is what you can do. In certain, in certain situation, what you need is, you need to have, uh, the same random numbers, you, you have to degenerate again and again. So that can be done by using, uh, getting the seed value. If you store that seed value, and then you can put that uh, stored seed value again into the random number generator. So the random number generator is inside the mechanism or the function that will generate the random numbers. So if you know the seed, so you can get the same random numbers again and again. So some said, some experiments, you need, it, you need that. So what you can do is you can initially get the, what is the random number. Of course, execution of uh, different sequences will give you different value. For example, so you take the random number, but you do not give it deep. So you will have the first one, you generate two, ran, two by two random number, that is that. And if you create another, if you execute the same command again, then you will get the different answer. But if you want to get the first answer again, what you can do is you can initialize your seed again, your random number generator by the same seed that is done before. And so the random number generator, you put the same seed and then call the random number again. So you will see that you will get the same random numbers again. So in one and in three will be the same. Okay. And then uh, comparison of matrix and element by element multiplication. So that's a similar comparison. So I'm not going to explain too detail. And especially you have to follow the correct operator. For example, if you want to create a BMI, so you have a vector of weight matrices, a vector of weights, and then the height, vector of height. Then what you need to do is, so since these are vectors, vector is a collection of uh, number of people people's weight and the height, the same dimension. 
but you need to do the each of elements you should divide by each of corresponding element to get the BMI for each person. So therefore you have to use this dot notation uh, very accurately. So you can simply use the vector as it is and use the uh, dot operation to compute the BMI for all these five people very easily. Okay. And this is the element by element multiplication for the matrices. And this is the matrix multiplication. So I'm not going to do it here because it is the linear algebra. This is actually the same thing that I explained with the, with the graph. Okay. Matrix into matrix. And uh, if you want to need more information, so this is the command you can run it and then you can get the what are the operations. So let's talk about single ex uh, example of application of matrix algebra to biological system. So for example, it is most of the cases, it is important to model population dynamics in biological system. Like it could be bacteria, could be humans, could be any animal model. So this can be represented at discrete time Markov chains. So that th this is simple uh, model where you have probabilities from one, uh, uh, one block to another. So what is the probability? One event to another. So you have all these discrete time events, but you know the uh, by getting the information, collecting the throughout, you have some probabilities. If you know these probabilities, then you can simply, for example, so, the, so here I'm going to talk about the nesting box. It's placed in a tree in the backyard and certain period of time, maybe one or year. So the, uh, the birds will come and then they will nest and then they will, there can be adults coming here and then there can, they can be uh, chicks produced later. So the probabilities, all these known probabilities are there. So for example, long, if you collect log from records, you have the, all these probabilities. So if it is empty, but the next year it will be empty, it's 0.6 probability. If it is empty this year and next year it will be, uh, uh, there will be adults with 0.3 probabilities, something like that. And then it is empty. And again, there will be chicks with 0.1 probability. And all these probabilities are known. Okay. And if you know this, so we can represent this in the matrix equation, discrete time equation. For example, the next year is uh, the, the next empty of next year, uh, or adults will be there in the next year, and the chicks will be there, there in the next year. So this is the i is the current year and the next year is the i plus one. So what you uh, so to get the e i plus one is you have to have at all these probabilities. For example, here the probability 0.6 times e i and 0.3 times a i and 0.1 times c i. So all these edges. So that will be there. So this is that. And the, similarly, you can create one for the this block and one for the this probability block. And if you have this format, so you can easily create this into a matrix format. So this is the, if, if you create this as, if you take this as a vector, three by one vector, and, and if you take the input as a three by one vector, as this one current vector, and this is the next vector, next year vector. And uh, so this is the matrix, all these elements, if you put all these elements into a matrix, for example, the first element is com computed by, the i plus one is computed by the matrix multiplication, multiply the first row with the color. So it's 0.6 times EI, 0.3 times AI, 0.1 times CI. So this is the sequence. So there's no difference. So the same set of equations is represented in matrix format. And you have the initial condition. So the initial condition is that you have empty box, but there's no fixed, there's no adults. And find, uh, the question is, find the probability that we have chicks in five years time. So simply the first year should be multiplication of A times X i X zero. In the second year, so you have this, and then you have the same probability distribution, and then A X one. So the X one can be replaced with A X zero, so A squared X zero. So after five, so after five years, it should be A to the power five times X zero. So the A is a matrix. You can simply take the A to the power uh, into five matrix format. But this, uh, if it is getting larger and larger, this is not efficient actually. So of course you can do this. So you have the A matrix, you put all this, and then you have the initial matrix one, zero, zero. And what you need to do it, if you want to get the, after five years, what is the uh, problem, uh, what is the 
uh, result, probability that we have chicks in five years. So that's basically, you need to get the power of A5 multiplied by zero. So you can see that A is a three by three matrix and getting power and again and again. So this will be uh, time consuming. So this, since this is simple, that will not take any time. But uh, this can also put this, uh, we can use this to convert uh, using, uh, if you want, not just five years, after 20 years, what will happen? So then you can use a follow to reiterate. But of course, again, you have to multiply this with 20 times. So the multiplying with the matrix with 20 times is very, very time consuming. And at the same time, it's uh, computationally inefficient. So good to get rid of that, you can have this uh, uh, kind of uh, convert this matrix into eigenvectors and eigenvalues. I hope uh, maybe you have some of, of course, some of you may have heard this conversion of uh, matrix into eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That's basically what you can do is the, you, you convert your matrix transformation into a linear transformation using eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Then you have scalar values. So the A can be represented by lambda times vectors. So then the lambda one, so since this is three, three by three matrix, you will have three eigenvalues. These are simple scalar values. So taking scalar values, multiples of scalar values is very easy. It is not uh, computationally uh, expensive because it's, maybe this is a simple, just a value. But if it is a matrix, then you have the number of elements and the multiplication is different. But uh, if it is a scalar, you can very easily done that. Okay? And then you have a single one. To, therefore, what you need is you need to have, you need to have the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So in MATLAB, very easily you can find both eigenvectors and eigenvalues with a simple command. So you have the A, and if you put I A, so it will give you the vectors and the, uh, and the the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are given as a square matrix, but the diagonal values will give you the all these eigenvectors. So the lambda one, lambda two, lambda three can be taken from the diagonal elements of the D matrix. D one one, D two two, D three. So these are the diagonal elements. And the vectors V one, V two, V three eigenvectors will be the first column, second column, and third column. With all this information we can simply compute, but what we need is alpha, beta, gamma. So that, to find the alpha, beta, gamma, we, we have the another additional constraint that is the initial condition. When m equal to zero, x zero. We know what is the value one zero zero, and putting zeros, so the, all the values uh, to the power of zero will be one. So this will be alpha times v one, beta times v two, gamma times v three, and v one, v two, v three. We know, and this is a linear system. It, constants so v100 a times so the a is basically v1 v2 v3 so that's a v vector and the x is the unknown alpha beta gamma so we can represent as a column vector alpha beta gamma so this can easily be solved using the lin solve function in matlab and it will automatically give you the parameters and the parameters are the alpha beta gamma so now we know the alpha beta gamma then when it is uh, if you want to find probabilities after five years so it's basically multiplied by the alpha and the uh, alpha is a constant and then the lambda one times five. So this is very easy because this is a constant and the beta times and, and the, uh, the, of course you have to multiply by the vector, corresponding vector, so you will get the corresponding problem keys. Okay. So if I run this, let me see. First, I need to create this one. First, you need to run that to get the data. Let's check. And also, it's going to solve it. Okay, this is with the first method, but with this one. Okay, so these are the, the probabilities. Of course, you can then in the long run, you will be converge to the whatever the probabilities that we discussed uh, the initially given. But the same thing can be done with uh, very easily. This is the eigenvectors, and these are the, this is the uh, uh, matrix with the eigenvalues in the diagonal elements. And uh, 
So this is after 20, so you get the same result after one month of time. Plus. Okay, so that's all for the arrays. What do we need a break? Let me go along. Hello, Mr. Chen. Yes, sir. Can we have a small break? Yeah, I think we can. Have a small... Okay. And maybe, yeah. So we are running out of time. What can you do? Uh, it's okay, sir. You can. Yeah, and the important thing is to me. Uh, I think yeah. sir, we have a quest. Okay, yeah. So uh, while having break, maybe. So what, what's the question? You can unmute them. Yes. So uh, uh, I have a small question. Thank you for Dr. Nalin uh, for a very nice uh, way of explaining. Uh, first of all, uh, you can find out the eigenvalues. Fine. Yeah. How about this uh, finding? If I want to find the determinant of matrices, what yeah. are the commands? What are the commands? Basically, yeah. commands. Determinant, I think. Uh, determinant so, and the inverse. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are the yeah. few commands. So yeah. the, the one you. is the determinant of phase the depth. So if you put that, so if I put this into the, so there, uh, let me, let me turn on the, yeah, that of A. So this will give you the determinant. So all these commands can be uh, get from the help and the, and for example, and then the doc, if you want to get the, the help of determinant. Be. That will open up uh, the map of documentation. So that it returns it, it the determinant of square matrix. Okay. So that is how we can compute. And uh, so the inverse, I think it's INV. Of course, the inverse may have, there will be a problem because the inverse, the determinant is zero. Of course, there's no inverse there. But since uh, for community, we do not have the determinant is not equal to zero. So this is the inverse of the matrix. So INV and DAT are the commands. And all these commands can be other necessary commands can be uh, obtained from I think block matrix. Uh, let's see block matrix. The, the, the documentation on that lab, it should be there all the commands, etc necessary okay is that clear any more question or right, that's quick break meantime i think i will switch to uh, some one of the important maybe graphs We shall take a quick five minutes break, sir. Maybe we can have another time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's see. Scripts. I can share this uh, actually. Okay. With the participants. Uh, I uh, have put a lot of effort to, to create these uh, uh, scripts actually. But anyway, so if you have the book, then it's very easy. So the, most of the content is uh, from the book. So I should thank them. So that's why I have all this, all this mentioned this uh, reference here. So it's a very good book. If you have the book, you know, uh, better to have it. If not, all these scripts will give you what you have to do.
Understand? Yes, I think we should uh, start now. Okay, thank you, Mutan. So I think I'll be a little bit quicker in this. Uh, so this is also important, uh, scripts. So the script is, is a collection of uh, whatever the commands that we put into the, you can remember. So whatever the commands that we put into the command window, so you can put that into a file. So there are two types of scripts. So the script is uh, a standard script, the uh, uh, extension is .m, so that is the standard one, and you cannot put uh, uh, graphs or figures into it. But live script that I am using here is the live script. Then you can put most of the information, the, the other extra comments and the figures, equations, text can be put into it. This will be useful when you, if you want to share with your group mates. So then when you do the research, so you can basically you can create figures and you can put that figure into the uh, into the script file itself, and then you can run it. But the bad thing is that it's a bit slower compared to the, the standard scripts. But the good thing is you can put more information that you can share, and at the same time you can run and see together. Uh, but anyway, so you have pros and cons for both. So let's uh, start with the how to create. Standard script. The standard script you can create. You can go to the new uh, 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 tab in the home. Sorry, home tab, new icon. Then you can have script. So the, similarly, you can create live script, function, live function, classes, etc. But if you create script, so then so it will become and uh, into the editor. So this is the editor. So it will be there. So you can put whatever the command commands into that. Okay. So. That, so to do that, of course, you can have we can access different uh, well uh, folders. So you need to know where you want to store this. So 
So you should, for that purpose, I have put different conditions. So, so these are different commands that you can use for identify. So identify where is the file browser. Sometimes you, you make it close this current folder uh, pane. So you can restore by putting this into the command window and then the present working directory, where the directory and all this. And the path is also important. So we have to store. So usually it's better to store your all the scripts into a separate folder. So uh, here I have created my test scripts. So, so the, all the test scripts that are, uh, will be stored in this folder. Okay, it is uh, in the laptop tutorial, but in the next uh, create a folder. You can use the MKDR to create a folder, and you can you, and then you need to add this into your MATLAB search bar. Then whatever the scripts or commands put into this will be uh, searched by the MATLAB. You can uh, easily run without um, by typing anywhere in the uh, in the command window, anywhere in the folder struct. Okay. So to do that, what you can do is you can get the path and also the, you, you need to use this location. The location can be, so you can create a location as the variable as the person with the working directory. And you can use this add path command to add this person working directory. So that is the, you have to do this with the, in the, in the parent directory that is in the method tutorial. And then you have this uh, my test scripts, whatever the name that you have given for your folder. And you need to add, uh, execute this path, this command. So this will automatically add your path location of the scripts to the method search path. So it will then search there. So you can execute any command uh, anywhere from that. So these are the couple of help files that is needed. Creating, an, uh, so as I mentioned, so the create, you can create using the, there are different ways. So the easy way is to use the, the, the home tab, new, so you create a script. And you have to save it. So if you click it, of course, you can see that there are different tabs available in the, in the scripts file. So you have live script, insert, and view. But if you click this one, so it will be changed to edit. So then you have to save. You can save here. And then it will give you your path directory. And of course, you can save as a .m file. You can give whatever the name that is needed. So that is how you can create. And then most of the time, what is important is uh, the editing. So the first command, so the first thing should be whatever the thing that you're going to, ex uh, you need to explain. So what is the script is about? So because when you go back, then it will display uh, in the, in the, as, a, as a text. So, so you, you know what is this script is about. And also if you put this in, into a, uh, into the script, uh, into, the, into the command line, and if you put help and uh, execute your uh, script name, so it will give you the whatever the things you put in the first section as the text comments that will display. So that's that, therefore that should be the uh, that should be about the script. Okay. And then we can section, sectionize, you can se separate section, you can enter separate section by adding two uh, percentage marks. And then you can create, uh, you can simply divide your code into nice space, separate sections. And each of these sections can be uh, executed in the in separate manner. So what you can do is you highlight the section by, and then putting control and enter together. So then it will execute only that section. That's also important. And color coding also is done when you put different keywords, for loops, and then the different comments are in green color, the, and the for and in the, the sum of the keywords in blue color. Likewise, color code will be there. And uh, for example, so let's talk about this one, one example. Michael is mentioned curve. I hope you all everybody knows what is it is for enzyme kinematics. So the first thing what you should do is you should clear all the existing variables in front of the script. So there, for that purpose, you have commands. And then if you have any figures uh, open, you can close any figures and then you can define the range of independent variables. You, have, you can define whatever the, the variables. And also if you have constant or parameters, then you can define all those parameters. Then you can do whatever the evaluation. 
for the for your computer computation what is needed. So in this case, it is the evaluation of the adjustment uh, equation, and then you can do the plotting. So those, these sections should be there. In that way, it will be easy for you to understand, follow through. Okay. Uh, Of course, there are ways. To, so, so I will go directly to the to the. So this I explained here. Uh, okay. So let me. So I have already created the first example. I think that is this one. So if I open this, so this is the my first script. So this is how you can write. So you go to the editor, and then you write. You start with the, the percentage marks. So these marks will give you the percentage marks will give you comment. So this will be about the. Uh, about the script, so the my first script. So this is a, what you said about it is plots and comparison. So this is uh, the phase or the whatever references that is needed. If you have copyrights, you can write copyright even. And then you need to start with clear and toss off. Clear is clear all the variables, whatever the universe space, because that will, that if you do not clear, then there can be clashes and then you get erroneous results. And if you open any figures, you can use cause all. And then you can, so this is a section, how define the section. So you, you should put two percentage marks and then it will be a separate section. So if you go there, you can see that it is highlighted. This section is highlighted and if I press, press control enter, so it will execute only that part. But execute the whole, all, uh, the whole uh, script. So you can use this green color arrow. So the run script. So if I run it, so it will be executed. And then this is definitions of variables. So definitions of, uh, uh, so this is the range of uh, substrate. So here, what we are going to do is we are going to vary the substrate concentration. And then, uh, so substrates at different levels. And then we are going to plot this uh, equation, kind of, okay? And for that, you have some parameters, constant parameters. So you can use as a defined with this. And then this is the function and the plot function. So this is a separate, but the plot function is basically you give the independent variable first and the dependent variable left. But of course, uh, I have a separate uh, uh, so we discussion. But hopefully, let's see, we'll head on. So if I run this, what will happen? So it will execute all of, the, all of these commands from starting from 1 to 20. So we have 20 lines of code. But uh, um, so this will not be executed. And the clear also, you can see that it, is, it cleared all the workspace and then all, there were no, nothing to plot. But if there, then it will be short. Uh, it, it, uh, and then it, this uh, plot the density equation. So then you have a substrate. So this is y, y level, reaction rate, and x levels. So you can do the, all this uh, manipulations uh, the, for plotting. So this is a very simple example. Okay, and uh, so if you want to add more comments, for example, if sometimes if you have to add more and more lengthy comments, then it's uh, it's not good practice to use the percentage mark every, each and every. So in that situation, what you can do is you can start with the uh, percentage mark with curly bracket, and then you can end with the percentage mark and the curly uh, closing bracket. So within that, you can put whatever the um, the comments, long lengthy comments. Okay. And if, if you if you have a code that is too long for here, so what you can do is you can add this uh, dot ellipsis. So that so that will take us the same line. You are going to a new line. And I'm not going to talk about the live editor because that's of course you can see that. So I, I'm using the live editor the same way. Only thing is you have to start from new live script. So that will create live script. So you can use, uh, the, of course, uh, here you can have different, you can different uh, additional, more additional inputs that you can put. For example, you can put image, you can put uh, code examples, and you can put even hyperlink, you can put equation. So, so we have the LaTeX equation even, you can have equation with the, is given by the, I'm not going to put it here. So something like that. So all these uh, 
take a, you know, the informative text can be put. And also you can put the control there. So this is important for a live script. I will show you an example later. Uh, and then when you write, uh, run uh, the my script, so you have these dots. So the, that, that, uh, the good thing with the script is you can debug. Debug in the sense you can create breakpoints and then you can run and stop. So for example, these lines are the commands. Uh, this, this is known as the break, uh, break alley, breakpoint alley. So if you click on this, so it will become a rate. So that basically you're adding a breakpoint. So the execution will stop there if you run it. So therefore you can debug. So if you find an error somewhere, so somewhere here, then you, what you can do is you can create a breakpoint and then you can run it and then it will stop there. So then the, the, the command prompt will be uh, switched to K slash S. So this, this means that it is in, in, inside the debugging process. Then you can uh, identify what are the, what is the error, what, what, what are the values to be. So for example, you can, if you want to check what is KM, is it correct or something like that, you simply type it there and then find out whether what, since this is simple, it's okay. But if, if you are complex, then you can see that. So you can do, uh, by adding these uh, breakpoints, you can uh, debug the call. So if you want to quit, you can click, click quit debugging, and then uh, you can clear all breakpoints as well. So that's also important when you do with the, uh, And then, uh, so as I mentioned, the live scripts, you can add the, these uh, control inputs. So if you have a variable that is uh, varying for some reason, so if you, have, if you have a live script, then you can add this control input, control input, and then while when you vary, this input will be vary, and at the same time, it will update the whatever the graph. So that's a uh, very inter interactive way of uh, analyzing if you have the live script okay so let me check uh, So this is, uh, of course, uh, you, you should put this into a live. Uh, so this is what you can think as a live script. And it, first you clear the variables and then the growth rate is varying. And then there are steps, the one to 100, and then uh, plot it uh, using a follow. And what we can do is uh, by changing the growth rate, you can uh, lively check uh, what will happen. So if I change this, somewhere another value, it will automatically run it and then it will show what will happen here. So if I change this to a different value, growth rate, and you can see. So sometimes maybe a little table, but yeah, so that's good thing with the live scripts. But the standard script, you cannot do that. You have to run it. Uh, and of course you can stop using breakpoints. And this is a very nice example. Let me check. So if you want to plot the cloud, so that we can see what we can do with the matlab. So this is, you know, maybe you have seen some else. So of course you can change the number of petals and all this uh, uh, lively. That it takes some time. So the script is the collection of commands and you have to put the commands in the same way that you put the commands in the command window, but only thing is, uh, but you can organize it and you can reuse it again and again. So that's the good thing with the scripts. So you can automate things at the same time, you can reuse this again and again, but simple modification. And always follow to uh, follow these uh, tips, basically uh, the tips in the sense, so please sectionize your code 
and with these commands, and then you can simply uh, run these sections separately and uh, comment, always comment, start commenting. When you come back, and then you should be able to understand what you have, what you did before. Otherwise, without comments, you will not. Uh, you may take another time to understand. So to get rid of that, it's, it's a good practice is to comment uh, every line or section with the uh, method clear. Okay, so that's all about scripting. And then I think uh, I should quickly touch upon the graphs. So this is also important because graphing and plot plotting, publication quality plotting can be done. Most of the researchers they do, even they have their data and the results in some ways. Most of the time they put that into MATLAB or any other, uh, especially for MATLAB for plotting purposes to get uh, good quality uh, figures. So the, cre uh, the creating a plot, you can do it two different ways. You can use point and click. For example, if you simply uh, have data in your workspace, you can put that into, uh, into the, uh, using the command uh, tabs. It can be very easily created. So let's do that first. So first, first you need to clear, close all the figures and clear empty spaces, and then you can clear the command window, and and then you can start generate the independent and dependent variable. For example, so this is the independent variable that is the x-axis, and then the y is the dependent variable. So any function, so depending on your uh, requirement, so you can create all this information. This can be experimental data even. So you have the data, T, and then you have the output, Y, as a, as a function, as a, as a data set in the workspace. And if it is workspace, then you can select, for example, if you can select this uh, from the workspace, assume that you are, you are selecting the Y, the function F, and then you go to the plot. And if you select plot, then you will see that this is being selected from the variable from the workspace being selected and there are different versions of graphs so you can take one then it automatically will print uh, the plot the, the variation of um, f but of course you can see that x axis is just the index just the number of uh, values so you have 129 points so it, the x axis will be 129 but it's uh, usually it's not the case but you have to the time in for whatever the independent variable. So to do that using the this function. So what you can do is you can first select the independent variable and then uh, put uh, clicking control and you can click the second variable. Then you can see here you will see both data sets x and y. Then if you plot it, you will see the as the x-axis you will see the uh, the in independent variable and as a y axis, you can see the dependent variable. So, there are a lot of different uh, uh, graphs types. You can have area, so that's one with scatter plots, five histograms, all this information. So depending on the requirement, you can directly plot using this method that is a uh, point and click using the, uh, this interface. Okay? And of course, if you, after plotting, so the, to create the figure, so you can create this inspect, uh, open in property inspector. Then if you click that, you will get all this information that you can edit. For example, if you want to add the, so it's loading, I hope you can see it. So if you click the figure window, so you'll have, you can change the font sizes. For example, if you want to change the stick table. So, uh, these are the labels. So if you want to label the X and Y, what you can do is click text, and then you can add uh, whatever the label here. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, easy. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, so of of course you can see that. So you can do a lot of things. Okay. By Simply you can 
change all these values, then you can, then you can change the what, size of the line, and everything can be done using this uh, point and click tool interface. And at the same time, you can do this with the script bank. Of course, you can save this. Uh, uh, plot, uh, plot can be saved using the save command here, save figure, and of course, also you can use save as to convert this into a different format, PNP, et etc. Uh, other formats. Okay. And uh, in certain ways, if you follow this, the procedure can be saved as a, as a, as a code. So if you format this and uh, after formatting everything, what you can do is you can simply use this generate code function. So then it will generate automatically a script. For example, if I generate it, so it and then it will be create. So, so you can give a name uh, depending on what is the requirement and it, it, it creates a, a function that gives you the input. If you give the inputs, it will create this figure with all this uh, formatting. So before generate code, you have to somehow do the, all this formatting. So then you can reuse again and again. Okay, so I'm not going to do it here, but uh, that's this way. And if you want to do this with the script files, that's also possible. So this is actually a good way to do this because then, of course, we have the control of it and you can reuse very quickly or you can edit it very easily. Then, therefore, what you can do is you can start with close all, clear, so all this is the starting, and then you can create all these uh, variables. And uh, what you can do is uh, this is the command to plot. You have to be the input, the independent variable, and the dependent variables, and the titles can be given in this format. Okay, so you can be, uh, you can even add the uh, different figure names, different figure windows, and figures can be separated. If you want to have separate figure, figures in the same script, so you can uh, name them with, uh, with using figure command. Okay, and. Uh, as I mentioned, the customizing line and markers can be done. So this is the plot. So we have the independent variables, dependent variable, and the rest of the commands, rest of the inputs, arguments are kind of a characteristic of how, to, how we can change the plot. So we can change the line width and the marker base color, and the, everything can be changed. Okay, very easy. So that you will get a very nice uh, output. And uh, again, if you sometimes you need to put uh, access levels, access levels so in that. Uh, at the same time, you may need to put uh, <coughs> different lines and uh, different uh, ticks. So sometimes it is cumbersome to have two two uh, large number of ticks uh, and the labels uh, in a graph. Graph. Then you can manually change this by giving these. Tick labels. Okay, so I will quickly show one of the examples. Okay. Okay, so at the same time, so what you can do is you can create, uh, so for example, if you want to create 3D shapes, so that's also possible with the, with the, with plots. So there are two different ways you can plot maybe the X, Y, Z, if you have the surfaces, landscapes, then you have all this information as, uh, as a grid. Okay, so then first thing what you can do is you can see as an image, if it is a 2D, 2D plot, for example, here, it's a 2D plot. It's a matrix, so this matrix can be simply you can have a look as a 2D plot. So, so this is the fungus. So, depending on the grid, so you have the grid, and then when they have the grid, then there's probabilities of all the, all the frequencies of availability in fungi, fungi you can see, and then 
you can use this image as the command to plot as a 2D graph. And you can change the color map and you can change the as in a similar way. You can access with the, with, with the dot notation as well. So if you, if you assign this color bar with, with a different name or even for the image with a different name, then all the property, properties can be accessed using this dot notation. Dot notation. And similarly, you can create 3D bars, for example, here. So the same thing, uh, uh, you can represent as 3D uh, bar, bar figure, 3D chart. And, uh, and if you want to uh, so this is a kind of example that you can do with this surface command and the mesh grids. Okay, so certain situations, what you have is if you have a three-dimensional data, that so there are three different ways that that can uh, the, the data can be generated. That's basically you have independent one uh, dependent variable as a function of two independent variables. So x y is varying with independently. So x varying, y varying, and depending on that, your y is varying. So this is a one uh, 3D data that you have. In that situation, x and y can be converted into mesh grid. That's the x and y can be created. And then you can plot the third axis as the z, z axis as the dependent variable. So if I plot this here, and of course you can have different color. So this is the example. Well, this is a different color max. And then mesh grid will create the x and y. And what you need to plot is the z is to use the, this surf, surf command. And another way is, will be you have the two dependent variables and which are function of one independent variable. For example, you have the time is the independent variable and then the, you have two different variables varying according to this independent variable. So you have one variable varying this way, another variable in this way. Therefore, you can first you can analyze, you can plot these two separately, but if you want to combine these two into together, you can use this plot three command as the independent variable and the uh, uh, two dependent variables and the independent variable. So if I plot this one, so this initially it will plot two different data sets with two different. So you can concatenate, you can put two data, uh, two data uh, plots in the same figure by putting, by giving the same independent variable and the dependent variable in the same command. So you have two sets, T and the ST, T and the CD. So it will be plot. But if you want to see this in the 3D in, uh, in the, as 3D graph, so what you can do is you can use this plot three command. So then X and Y will be varying. So that's ST and CT will be varying, but at the same time, so uh, it, uh, T is varying, but and accordingly, it's T and the ST here. So you can use this command to look, have a look. And of course, you can use multiple plots in one figure using this subplot command. So you can divide your figure space into columns and rows, and you can access these columns and rows and plot using this subplot. For example, if it is subplot two, three, four means you are divided your figure space into two rows and three columns, and the four is the fourth grid, two, three. You will have two into three, six grids in the figure space, and the four is the fourth one of that grid. That is started from going from uh, starting from one first row to to the left and then the second row to the left. The numbering of grids. Now, of course, you can use to create different graphs as well. So this is a different uh, generating graphs. And uh, so this is how we can divide this into sub figures. We have three by two by three sections, and the two by three plot number is varying one, two, three, four, five, six. And accordingly, if you put it in a loop, you can go through all this in the loop. And at the same time, sometimes you can create the same figure but different sizes for different paces. So that can be done in this way. First, you can create two, three, one, the so two into three. And uh, that's all together you have six grids. And the first grid, you plot one signal. And then the, the second one will be taking two and three grids. So you have, for example, here, 
you have the first one and the two and three. You can combine this and put something here, and you can combine these three and put something there. So that way you can nicely organize your uh, information or your data to, for a nice figure on the ladder. Okay, so then uh, let's, uh, I think, uh, so all about uh, the talks will be something uh, like this. So this is, uh, this can be done using a point and click method using the plot tab or else you can simply create scripts and that's it. So the, another important one is, so I think I will, I have a question here. So I will use this, uh, this seems important. Importing data to the MATLAB space. Yeah. So the importing and exporting. This is very very important because the, most of the time you will have your data will be collected in somewhere else as an experiment. So what you need is you need to get these data into the MATLAB working in environment. So for that you can do. There are different ways. For one thing you can use this importing tool. Let's say. So the uh, importing tool will give you. So let me check. So, so this is the import tool. So if, uh, you can click import tool, and then it will simply create. Uh, of course, beforehand, most of the time you will store maybe the Excel data sheet, or maybe you will store the, those data in as CSV files, and uh, may, maybe uh, you will store this in Excel sheets. For example, if you want to, if you have stored this, this I have already created these two types of data sheets. CSV is the comma-separated files, and then this is Excel data sheets. So you can ex import this to vary using the same way. So you use the import data and then click it and you select it. So this will uh, come to important tool. So this is known as the import tool. And here you have different. Uh, mm, ranges, for example, now it is uh, divided into columns are divided and then you can select whatever the range that is needed. So this is the range that you can define. And uh, variable names is also given, so you can take these variable names as well. And uh, sometimes it's better to get this as a table array because if you have a table array, then you can you will have different uh, types. The data types can also be important, but sometimes maybe you need to uh, come uh, take these as column vectors. Then you need to select as column vectors. Then each of these the columns will be separately imported to the workspace. But if it is a table. Or else, sometimes if you need, you may need to select this as numerical matrix, as a matrix. Then you need to know how to access of each of these columns. Of course, now you know how to access columns and part of it for the further processing. Like, of course, if you do numeric matrix, then it will not get the, the first time. Most of the cases, all of these data will come. If the first row will give you some sort of text strings that uh, give you the the what type of data that's just a uh, text so that will not be important so that's the only drawback if you are going to use numeric matrix most of the cases the table will be good and then you can click import data so that will come and it is being imported to the uh, uh, workspace then you can do whatever the and it in front of So you can see that it's a table, so if you click it, so it is there. So you can have, so you have the name, it's names as well, and then you have all the data. So you, know, so you can access all this data using the simple commands that we discussed uh, when uh, access, how, how to access the data uh, previously. Okay. And of course, uh, if you want to export these data, so you can use these different types of commands. If you want to ex uh, export data into Excel, then the right table command will be the 
the, the command will is the one you should use. So then you can go, put all the data into an Excel file, or else what you can do is you can use the CSV file, write CSV, uh, uh, or else you can use this F open command. F open command, you give the CSV file name, you open as a write function, and then you can put whatever the data into the, uh, into the file and you can share it as a CSV file. So, so whenever you need, you can take them again. I think uh, so since uh, the time is running out, so I was a bit hurry in the two at the end, but of course we haven't talk about functions, anonymous functions, and built-in functions. Built-in functions are almost the same. Most of the commands that uh, come with the MATLAB, like the commands that we discussed, uh, the trigonometric functions, etc. But creating a function is very important. Uh, so the, this functions is, uh, it's again a script file. Only uh, difference is that, so you have input and output. So the, this is a simple function. So you, it is a script file, but you give the function name and you have something to output and you have something to input. Then uh, whatever the thing that you can do with these inputs can be put in the script and then you have to put this in. So this is the basic structure. So it's, it's simple, but you can make complicated. So complicated processes you can do with this one. So then it will create a function, then you can simply call this function as normal BT function. Hello, Matshani, what can we do? Uh, so you can take uh, 10 more minutes. Okay. okay, so since this is important, I will briefly, quickly go through. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is, uh, for example, if you want to, uh, Compute a quadratic solve a quadratic equation. So this is you can give you the name of the function and whatever the inputs of the quadratic equation you have coefficients a, b, and c. That is known. So what you need is the answer. So the answers are x and y, x, x1 and x2, two answers since it is a quadratic equation. And this is the format. So function. So this output should be written within the square brackets and the quadratic name of the function. And then the input should be put within round brackets and then you can give uh, some comments so that you can understand uh, what is the function is about and then if you put this here also that will automatically create uh, links to other standard functions for example if you put c also then you then, then you click then you open this function there will be links to these functions so, so that uh, that you can see even in matter uh, uh, help files okay so then you 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 compute the solution of the quadratic equation, and then you need to output this to x, x1 and x2. If it is computed here, so automatically it will be taken out from the function. So when you call the function, so you have to call quadratic a, b, c, whatever the values, then the result can be stored in these two variables. For example, okay, now this code not in the current folder, so because I have, Copy these all these into the my function. So we have to go there, and then yeah, we can run this. Okay, so the quadratic. So as you can see, so if I put help uh, quadratic, so the help quadratic in the command window. So this will basically give you whatever you have written. Uh, so let me let me open that as well. So this is the this is the function. Whatever you have written in the within the percentage in front of the percentage marks as comments, so that will show up. So that's basically the view. Uh, what is it all about? And also, if you put C also and functions, so you can see that you can have click clickable uh, link links to the different functions, and the solution is given. And solution we are uh, uh, copying to two variables. So that's uh, very important uh, to uh, put this to get, if you want to get both solutions, then you have to put uh, variables 
within square brackets. So if you if you put a single value, so the first output will only be saved in the uh, as this result. So the live function is also the same, but only thing is uh, now we can have um, uh, different context in the in the in the text. So we can have images and other formatted equations can be put as uh, as additional information, but it is the same. Uh, so, for example, some of the yes, functions are something like this, the logistic map, and this is has been given, and some maps, of course, uh, in, certain, uh, in certain cases, maybe you can put some of the functions inside the functions, so the, those are known as local functions. For example, here, to, this is the main function, so you create, uh, you have the inputs, but there are no outputs. Here, but of course, output can be a plot. If it is a plot, that will automatically output something. It will be output to a figure. But this is, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have something output as numeric values, but it will be uh, there will be plot. And when you come uh, with, uh, within this function, so you can create another small function, so that you can maybe uh, that, that way you can. Uh, hierarchically organized uh, or else you can organize in such a way that you can understand the uh, concept of uh, doing the computation very easily or the concept or the flow will be easy to understand. So similar, so the same way you can define the functions and you can reuse these functions inside the main function. That's the only difference. But these functions cannot access from outside, but only you can access the main function. Only the logistic map will be accessed from the outside but inside that function, it will automatically use these uh, local functions to uh, do the task. Okay. And then there's another function, sequence match. So this is a DNA sequence, how we can match different, uh, if you have, uh, for example, Yeah, something like that. Uh, if you have a sequence of a DNA structure, and if you want to find where the whatever the matching function, matching sequence maybe uh, there, then the location of these matching functions, then you can or whether we have location uh, the location or whether there are match, matching sequences, something like that. So you can run. Of course, you cannot run. But if you run this one, then it will not uh, you will not be able to run it because you need some input. So you can only run this by 